At the end of yesterday's series, I put up a poll on the community page channel over at YouTube and basically asked you guys, when do you want to see more Game of Thrones? Do you even want to see more Game of Thrones? 65% of people, I believe it was, voted in favour of seeing more Game of Thrones. So, congratulations. Welcome back to Game of Thrones. So, I kind of wanted to... I, I kind of wanted to do something unique, something different. We've spent a lot of our playthroughs in a Game of Thrones messing around in Essos for the most part. We, we did a sort of a R'hllor run. We did a Gogasossi pirate run. We've done a Shy. Then, of course, the Storm Kings of last series. I was trying to think of a great start. I was thinking maybe we're playing Down in Dawn, maybe we go Beyond the Wall. And then I thought, last series, we kind of engineered our own pretty great story, huh? The Forgotten House, if you will. Who could it be? Dear Lord Cameron of Summerhall, Boris, stop it, you're ruining my intro. Get out of here, Boris. There we go. Thank you. Origins of a God. Generations ago, the Patriarch of House Volani, Markello, approached Gala Durandon and promised him power within the ruins of Valyria, which only Markello knew how to access. Galad agreed and funded the quest to the Smoking Ruins, though Markello planned on leaving Galad for dead and keeping the riches for himself. The two quickly became close friends, and Markello atoned for his evil ways by delivering to Galad what he promised, a great dragon of Valyria. In return, Galad allowed Markello to take on the Valyrian noble house name of Valani and ordered Markello, offered Markello, or ordered him, to take his own daughter's hand in marriage, along with land to govern. Now House Durandon, using the very dragons they obtained from Valyria that day, sit upon the Storm Throne. Five kingdoms united under one king they call their god. Yet House Valani was forgotten. Though promises came from the Storm Kings, who used the power of Valyria to become all powerful, none were delivered. Summerhall was, and still remains, all that House Valani was gifted in exchange for absolute power, but no longer. We have sat quietly as our Durandon cousins grew fat, and we remained small. We will carve out our own greatness from the lands which helped them carve out theirs. For we have the blood of the Storm, and the blood of the Dragon Lords of Valyria. Fire and Fury. That's right, we're playing as House Valani. The guys that we kind of, uh, I kind of, forgot about midway through the series. So, if you haven't seen the previous Storm King series, this is going to be very confusing for you. We played as House Duran and we restored the Storm King worship there. We have, it's nice to see that that's still completely fucked up. Gods of the Storm reformed uh, under God King Boris of House Duran. And here we are. And uh, this is post his conquest. Gods of the Storm reformed there, the dominant religion in Westeros, bowing to God King Boris as their king. Why is he the pale spider? What has he been up to? Sly blood of God King Boris. Did he seriously forge a bloodline in the time it took me to set this scenario up? Oh, Boris. Classic Boris, huh? Oh, good old Boris setting up a bloodline in about two years flat. Nice work. Anyway, one of the characters we were playing as at the very start of the campaign called Gala Durandon met a man called, uh, what was his name? Cahoris Valani, something like that. The guy whose name I just said it multiple times. And they together went to Valeria. Boris got a dragon out of it and conquested all of this. Yet yeah, House Valani was forgotten. All they got was a single barony. So I thought, why not lead them to greatness? There was a suggestion I saw loads and loads and loads during the polls and during the comment section. Restore Valeria. Everybody wanted the restoration of Valeria. To be fair, we've not actually ever done that before, and it seems like a pretty good playthrough idea. So, if we look over to Valeria, what is normally the smoking ruin is actually uh, a habitable state, if not a little bit dense. That's my only complaint about this. This is the, uh, obviously, Colonized Valeria submod here. Full list of all the changes that have happened since the last mod pack will be available in the description. My only complaint about this is uh, it's a little bit too dense, right? There are a lot of different provinces. They are all, of course, a ruin because Valeria is a ruin. The Smoking Sea remains a ruin. That's where the, I guess, the, the there were originally nine volcanoes in Valeria, and then they all set off simultaneously which which bathed it all in ash and caused a load of earthquakes and ruined valeria essentially that that was the doom however this mod has sort of made it more how it is in the books and in the show where it's a bit more of a uh, stony ruin rather than the game of thrones mod which made it all out to be some volcanic mess so we can go and visit and potentially colonize and potentially rebuild the true kingdom of valeria there with with the province of valeria being right there in the center not only that, I've downloaded some other mods as well that are for the current version of the uh, Game of Thrones mod. We've got some building overhaul mods, which of course I will link in the description, that give us a lot of extra shit to see and do in Valyria. Look at this, we've got some Crazed Alchemist Workshop, we have Dragon Towers, we have Wine Sinks, we have Valyrian Mines and Volcanic Activity. Oh, oh wow, Dragons located in this province thrive, thrive in the heat of volcanoes, given the following effect, size, growth, and life expectancy. That's very, very cool. Valyrian Architecture, Valyrian Fortresses. It's going to be quite Valyria heavy because people seem quite happy about that. And I thought we've already got a Valyrian house that we've, we've set up for ourselves here. 
so in terms of the continuity, I, I have just to peel back the kernel over here, started a new save game just so that uh, so, so it runs nice and nice and effectively that we won't play that old bog down save game. So Boris is still in control of the Iron Throne here. It's a few hundred years earlier, but it's identical. Besides that, they still have, if we look in here, they've still got the same uh, Skull of Heartfire. They've still got Kraken Fire as well there, some of the dragons. I think they have dragon eggs. Yeah, he's got two dragon eggs as well there. So uh, maybe, maybe Durana will get back onto the whole dragon riding thing because the last Durana dragon did die when we were playing through that last campaign. If you haven't watched that one, I would recommend watching this that one first, but it doesn't matter too much if you haven't. So what are our goals then? I guess colonize Valyria, huh? We could, but I'll leave it up to you guys what you want to see here. Feel free to let me know in the comment section. There are two uh, kingdoms of Valyria here. So there's Valyria proper, which is in the south. These sort of three, uh, kind of four islands uh, towards the very south. And then there's the lands of the Long Summer, which is northern Valyria, uh, bordering Volantis and, and the other ruins of very northern Valyria there as well. What are these kind of things? They actually count as north Valyria. Okay, that's confusing. So this is middle Valyria. Now, beyond that, there is also the Empire of New Valeria, which includes sort of the lost free city of Isaria there, up in the Dothraki lands. Kohor, Norvos, Lorath, Pentos, Mir, Volantis, Lisa, and Tyrosh. Although it would be fun to unify all of those back under Valeria. It would be fairly difficult, I think. Uh, it might be a little bit too complicated. Now, along with all other series that I seem to do on this channel... There are religious reformation features. Now, these weren't added by me. These are part of the base game, which is why I was so interested to see this. Because the Game of Thrones dev have taken basically full advantage of the new sort of Holy Fury reformation mechanics. So what we can do now is during reformation, we can pick some unique... I won't, I won't hover over them or, or, or spoil them for the future. There are actually unique doctrines for the Valyrian faith. You can see one there, the Valyrian blood. Which allows us to do various things, but just know that there are goals and and you know they've seemed fairly fleshed out too they seem very very cool now that they've uh, used this system so we can reform the valyrian faith and actually maybe do something unique with that but hey what are our holy sites then so we're looking at mantaris which is this province here we've got old volantis oh that could be difficult against war with volantis would not be too fun velos i assume is a ruin uh, it's next to so this is uh sort of gishkar obviously slavers bay next to that one okay fair enough what else we got uh old gis is Yes, okay, funnily enough. And then we've got Dragonstone as well. Interesting. That does kind of make sense, seeing as that was sort of the, the last sort of haven of the survivors of the Doom of Valyria. Either way, right now, we are just a very simple Lord of Summerhall. Still a colony, is it? We do need to focus on making sure that this doesn't fall into complete ruin. Otherwise, I think we get a game over, right? Well, before we worry about realm management and everything else, and our, and our future plans for reforming a religion and building up one of the greatest empires in the known world, why don't we just keep our realm together, huh? Stop our stop our actual colony of Summer Hall falling into ruin there and set up the council. People are going to be happy to see that I fixed the council screen too, because that was a, every episode. Excuse me, streamer, your your councillors, your your councillors are in completely the wrong order. Please fix. So we need a new maester, which we'll send for right now. I'm thinking we go for the business focus actually, because Summer Hall is. You know, it was originally a Targaryen ruin that, that Boris basically gave us some money to rebuild and then never actually finished rebuilding it himself. What? But we lost it in a war, didn't we? Against the Reach or something like that. I don't remember what caused it here. Let's pick business focus because this place is going to need some serious uh, some serious investment. Plus, it's also a major, major tax malice there. So, unfortunately, we're not actually making any money right now. So, we're relying completely on basically what is event-spawned money. Uh, we can choose... Oh, man. Of course, we're Valyrian, too. So, what does that give us the option to do, then? Natural Rorus minus 2%. Dragon taming and hatching chance, obviously, up massively. Uh, God names Valyrian, Meraxes, Vagar, Urax, and Cyrax. Uh, we dislike the others, demons, and dark spirits. I mean, that's true of everyone, right? Have a plus five opinion boost with all other religions due to their religious tolerance. Can choose another religion group to be their syncretic faith and receive a plus ten opinion boost with its members. That might be a good idea. Um, if we maybe pick Gods of the Storm as our syncretic religion, seeing as we are fully surrounded on all sides by, funnily enough, the Gods of the Storm. Although saying that actually might not be the best idea because we have the blood of the Storm Kings. We're a descendant of both Valeria and, of course, House Durandon. So we do have that uh, Stormlander opinion plus five. Do we not have, like, Gods of the Storm opinion? Are you serious? Did I, not? I I think I need to add that in the future, but we'll worry about that for, for, uh, for, for long distant future, by which I mean tomorrow's episode. I'll get that done. So we want to choose a syncretic faith basically whenever we get the offer to. Can we see the dragons? What have we got? Uh, dragon Riders. Fully known. So there are no dragons. We've got some baby dragons here. Uh, the other known... Owners of the Dragon Eggs are God King Boris, located in King's Landing. So I think these baby dragons are, in fact, Drogon, Viserion, and the other one. Yeah. Well, I'm not really surprised. Wait, what? Materion of King's Landing? Oh, shit. He's already got a dragon. Oh, is it? It's locked in the dragon pit, right? So it's, it's untamed. Okay, then. So he's already hatched a dragon egg. Well, that was bloody quick. 
Um, what's he got then? Yeah, Materion's Whip there. Fantastic. Okay. So, like I was saying, because of the way I've set this up, because we are a couple hundred years back, the, the Daenerys' dragons are still kicking around. I hope Daenerys isn't still kicking around, otherwise that could cause some issues, huh? Dear Lord Cameron of Summerhall, I hereby invite you to the Grand Feast in King's Landing. Of course. Kel God King Boris, son of the Storm, King of the Iron... Uh, sorry, King of the Storm Throne, sorry. Heir to the Kingdom of the Reach. Let's travel to the Feast. So along with everything else, the Patron Houses have also survived the transition here. We've got House Wholesomeness, we've got House Pelagia, we've got House Corndog. All of those characters have come back for, uh, for round two. Like I said, this time around I'm going to be opening up to you guys in the comment section. So uh, when we get some land, we'll set, start setting some Valyrian Houses. Uh, did I just challenge someone to a duel? That may have been a horrible mistake. God King Boris committed so much gold to this extravagant feast. In particular, I was impressed with a large centerpiece on the die table. It represented a green lawn surrounded with large peacocks, feathers, green branches, to which, how impressive. We don't really care about your, your feast, Boris. Well, I mean, we do. It's a very nice feast. He's taken off his storm crown and instead he's decided to wear the crown of who? Joffrey. For the love of God. Well, I suppose it is somewhat stag-like, right? Because Joffrey thought he was a Baratheon, at least. We had, and he also got Stannis' crown. Fantastic. So what was I saying before he rudely interrupted us? I honestly don't remember now. It doesn't matter too much anyway. So let's send for a maester. Uh, how much? Oh, shit. Of course you can't send for a maester because we're not earning any goddamn money. Right. Okay. Uh, death of Rosby. So Lord Giles Tarth has taken over Rosby. King of the Iron Throne. There we go. He's officially crowned by God King Boris. Put the crown on his own head. I guess it was Joffrey's crown, huh? That's what I was saying. So I will be opening up this series to you guys in the comment section. Patrons still have their houses. If you're a patron and it's just house, of course, feel free to throw me those as well. But I need some Lords of Valyria when we get up to that stage. So if you guys have some Valyrian houses you'd like to see added to it. When we get up to that point, I'll be asking for uh, for some suggestions for that. And some uh, lucky ones of you out there might get to rule under or alongside. Let's say alongside House Valani there. And uh, maybe help us get rid of the otherwise tyrant God Boris. God King Boris. My news. My, my lord, news from Meirene of a great trial by combat. Uh, so Daenerys is around then, because th we're, we're a little bit time-shifted here. Her heir is Prince Aemon of the... S oh god, Aemon Targaryen. Aem wait, Aemon Targaryen? That's the guy who trained Jon Snow at the wall. He's 102 years old. What happened to the wall might be the better question. No, he's left the wall. He's got grayscale, though. He's also a blessed ancestor, venerated by his descendants. I'm sure he is. Okay, fantastic. It's nice to see everything's more or less survived the transition. But the, the political map, more or less the same. So we've got our, our High Lords that we set up more or less on uh, last series there. We've got like River Run, obviously, as a High Lord. And these guys are all Stormlanders as well. North and Dawn, both independent from the Iron Throne. Another thing I've installed as well that I forgot to mention is uh, if we go over to this one... The economy map mode, we have a full trade route. So this is another mod that was updated for the current version of the Game of Thrones mod. Adds trade routes to Valyria as well, which is obviously very, very cool. Because there's two sub-mods working together. One was designed for the other. So that means taking back Valyria isn't necessarily going to completely bankrupt us. Is there a trade route running through Summerhall? Of course not. Every bloody province next to Summerhall besides Summerhall gets gold. We could be screwed here from the fact that our province just... We can't afford to keep Summerhall going. Chief General. Yes, thank you. Boris, I appreciate that. Dear friend, peace be with you. Thank you, distant cousin Boris. We got some fancy armor. We actually... Oh, we are a very good... I didn't even talk about our character. So this guy is partially randomly generated. Uh, you know, descendant of their Markello and Gale Durandon. Uh, he's an incredibly good commander. Brilliant commander, defender, siege leader, leads from the rear. Wrath, authoritative, gluttonous, and charitable. He is married to Lady Vayner, who is apparently a strong genius. Kind, diligent, patient, temperate. Fantastic. Lord Cameron is suspiciously good, but I promise you, I didn't fuck around with that character. I wonder if, uh, because there's a mod I used to set up these scenarios. Oh, good. Aegon Targaryen invades. A young silver-haired man has landed in Westeros, claiming to be Aegon VI, trueborn son of Rhaegar Targaryen and rightful king of the Seven Kingdoms. It's believed that he perished in the Red Keep at the hands of Gregor Clegane during the War of the Usurper, along with his sister Rhaenys and mother Elior Martell. It is purported that it was not Aegon who perished there, but some some peasant baby who was put in Aegon's place. Um, I mean, obviously not. Aegon is dead. He's a mama's dragon. Clearly, we can't. We, we have to support the throne on this one. This is this is uh, a rival Valyrian turn up trying to take the Storm Throne from our good ancestors. Oh my God! People are actually backed. People are backing Aegon. Is that the traitorous House Tarly backing Aegon's uh, Aegon's landing? Wow. Okay. So this is from the books, actually. This isn't in the show, but it does exist in the books that uh, there is there is Aegon of Essos, supposedly Varys and Illyrium Apatis of Pentos swap this kid out as a baby, and he is the, the true son of Rhaegar Targaryen. Obviously, in the show, 
spoilers for Game of Thrones if you haven't seen it, but I don't know what you expect to come in here. They rolled it into Jon Snow's character. Um, whereas in this one, he is still... Well, they might still do it in the books as well, obviously. But uh, this kid, it, it's sort of debatable whether or not he is actually Aegon or whether he's like Illyrio's bastard son is, uh, is, a, uh, is a theory behind that. Either way, he's a threat right now, and hopefully... Boris doesn't immediately lose his seat because that would sort of ruin the campaign pretty early. Well, it wouldn't ruin it, but it would certainly be uh, subverting my expectations. Amid all the chaos and amid us being named Chief General and all that nonsense, he chose fit to give us Hadlow Keep for services rendered. I don't know whether it's because... I mean, this is part of the King's Landing. I don't know why he gave it to us. Summerfield? Uh... Yeah, I don't know why. I guess it's because there's no incumbent of it already, or maybe because it's under the Stormlands or something weird's happened. It's it's the Mega War system that we all know and love, right? So where is little Aegon then? 96%! Oh my god, in a sec- Do you see that? Just immediately went to 96. Well, this is absolutely no threat in that case. So how many troops did he even turn up with? A thousand men. It was, it was an honest, good effort. Unfortunately, he is now in prison. Um, he's been transferred to Pentos. Why would you do- Oh, they ransomed him. No, they didn't ransom him because he's clearly in prison in- Oh, he's still in prison for us, but his liege is now Pentos. Right, got it. So, so Illyrio and Mopatis would have to pay the ransom on him if he wanted it. That would make a lot of sense. Now, I can't promise now that God King Boris, just looking at his uh, truces tab there, I can't promise that Boris won't just immediately go and snatch up Dawn and the, uh, and the North again. It would very much be something he was probably going to do, I'll be honest with you. Um, it's a shame we kind of, like, fight in tournaments. I don't know whether it's because we're... Oh, because we got personal combat skill minus five, huh? Just because we're that completely unskilled. Okay, then. Um, let's attend in the hopes that we can still get some skills out. We're an incredibly good military leader. It's a shame we don't have a military to lead. So how are we exactly going to go about colonizing Valyria? Well, we're obviously going to need a province on the coast. Otherwise, that's not going to work because we're not going to have any boats. So I think we're going to have to start working maybe towards grabbing up the Red Watch or something from... Uh, Lord G Julian, Gullian, uh, Comrade there. We're going to have to go and grab that house from him, although he's also kind of a powerhouse too there. Knighted. Okay, we'll have to keep a close eye on things with that one. His son's already also a bloody... Oh, somehow banned, right? He's a mercenary leader. I was very confused about that for a second. Um, we're not challenging anyone to a duel, thank you very much, because we have minus five personal combat. We, we need to move to the coast, is, is what I'm getting at, so that obviously we can start building ourselves up. Not only that, a lot of these building mods that we've got are specifically installed because, you know, I know that we need to play a little bit tall here, right? We need to focus on uh, building up our own economy, building up our troops a little bit. We, we can't just go and invade Valyria. We, there needs to be more to it than that. Um, both in terms of, obviously, gameplay planning, but also story as well, I think. We we'll have to land in Volantis first either way, or at least get something nearby, because you can only colonize provinces that share a direct border with you. So before then, we're going to have to fabricate claims on, say, Volantis, or at least marry our way into claims into Volantis. Uh, sort of maybe play up our Asossi Valyrian bloodline and things and, and start moving into over there. Or we could do the opposite perspective from, like, Illyria, Mantaris, Tolo, or something like that and eventually work our way over there and that would allow us to recolonize but you've got to remember we're still a vassal of the of the storm throne we'll still be a vassal of king boris so at that stage we have to decide do we want true freedom do we want house Valani to really sort of um take their own destiny into their hands for once in their goddamn life and overthrow king boris or at least depose him and become independent but of course we make an enemy for life then that would throw us definitely straight into a blood feud then it would be House Valani versus Durand in the, the Battle of the Storms. To all the subjects of God King Boris, that's all of us, thank you. Uh, to literally everyone here. The inheritance of the Kingdom of Westlands is thrown into question with the death of Lord Argalak Ashenhearth. Great name. Uh, Theomor Lannister. Oh my god, he put the Lannisters back in the Westlands. He did something I couldn't do when we were actually playing as him. Who's Theomor Lannister then? Um, I have absolutely some very distantly related Lannister here. Rollum Lannister. Interesting. But he is Faith of Seven. It's kind of surprising that he would keep landing people who are completely different cultures to him but there we go just classic boris things huh so we needed a priest how are we going to get a priest well we actually can afford a little bit now that we're starting to build up a little bit of gold here oh there's an option to look for minerals you want to know if they're a valuable resource at your capsule so i believe this is the building mod that adds this and again the ability to play tall and sort of there's a bit more of an economy background to this one right we might want to grab even though they're not coastal certain of the sites near us like like Fawnton, for example because it has that trade route and that will give us a bit more capital we can play a little more of uh an easier time playing tall without the need for a goddamn dragon because i don't think i could deal with another damn dragon playthrough let's also go to the barbers because this is not the face of a man who's ever going to rule anything besides uh i mean realistically let's be honest his face on a milk bowl uh let's go for oh my god that, that haircut's so good <laughs> that haircut is so there we go that haircut beard combo 
business at five. My chemical romance at eight. Perfect. Thank you very much. What else can we do here? Uh, tame a dragon. Build a war chest. A tame a dragon. That seems to be a little bit jumping the gun there. Have a son. I think have a son is a great idea. He's 19. His wife is 19. Uh, our ambition is... As, uh, we're still on carousing. Shit. Did I pick carousing and not business? That was, a, that was a mistake. That was not something I intended on doing. Never mind. We're in yet another civil war. We're against House Martell. Are they... Yeah, so this is what I was talking about. Now that we aren't the God King, now that we aren't driving the God King, there's nothing to stop his ambition, his madness. Maybe this is the start of it, right? He has gone to war against apparently also a rebel leader. Uh, oh, because he's at war with an Empire level title. Yeah, it's a little bit screwed up there. But he has declared the Storm Throne Dornish du Jour War over Dawn on Prince Doran the Wise of House Martell. So he's going to try and reunify the Seven Kingdoms under the Storm Throne. Right now it's what? Five Kingdoms, like we said. It's sort of the Veil. Vale. Uh, Vale tried in Westerlands Reach and Stormlands. Technically kind of six if you want to include the, include the Crownlands as well. Oh, God. The late nights. The way my wife, Aliona, has stopped touching me or even looking at me. Now the whispers of her and that foul infidel Dale. Dale, you goddamn infidel. Let's confront him. He acts shocked and denies having an affair with my wife. Pay to have them both watched or we say, oh, okay then. Suspected as already, seducing my spouse. Uh, gains depressed or paranoid. Paranoid would be great, but we'll pay to have them both watched instead, huh? Hopefully it doesn't cost us too much gold, because we need to obviously keep Summerhawk, you know, not completely in ruins. Let's also hire, while we're on the subject of spending all my money on things that aren't particularly important, let's hire a Storm Singer, Jellyana, uh, just so that we can, we're not gonna obviously try and proselytize, you know, the, the, the wonders of the Valyrian faith here in the middle of the Stormlands. That wouldn't make much sense, and it also definitely would not work, given that they've got a Storm God ruling their Stormy Throne. Um, I guess we'll just perform charity, try and keep people quite happy about us. Can, does Summerhall have anything unique? Um, we've got a Dragon Tower, which is kind of fun. I guess we can build that because we're Valerian in hindsight. I guess that's just something we can build everywhere, right? Barber Surgeon. Excellent. Uh, secret passages, secret tunnels, lots of fort level here. We've got lots of tax income as well. Apple tree orchard and lemon tree orchard and all that type of stuff. Sure. Okay, fine. My spouse report that they've caught my wife and I love a Dale in Flagrante Del Delicio in a glade near Summerhall. <sighs> she was so good as well. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, he's Valerian. He's got secondary wives. Oh my god, Jesus, good lord. Blew my mind then for a second. Okay, denounce filth. Denounce them both publicly. Absolute filth. Can we trip them in prison? Can we ransom them off? Yes, there we go. Get her up. Go. Get out of here. Right. Oh, but she's already fled our courts. The court of Sir Mendel. Dale. Dale tried to kill the metal. Let's uh, send our marshal in there. Marshal, I need you to arrest Dale for me. Wait, where is Dale? Um, he is a spy master of Summerhall. Well, that's always good to have your spy master as your, uh, as your rival. Generally, tends to be a ver very good idea for playing CK2. Take my word on that one. Instead, we're going to actually, uh, put you in prison though, Dale. There we go. And what do we do with Dale? Mutilate him? Uh, humiliate him? Throw him in the I can't believe episode one we've already been cucked. Good God. Um, mutilate him. Mutilate him now. You order the jailer to drag Dale from his cell where you methodically prepare your tools. No one crosses you unscathed in this day. We've become a living example of this. At least that's the plan. Who knows? But you could slip. Eunuch. Wow. What a madman we've become already. I love it. Wait, is he stayed in our court? Dale. How can you be this much of a masochist, my friend? Uh, what do you think? Should we be in prison again? Uh, we could just ask to leave the court and he li Dale is disappointed. What does he want more? Police are going to have another. Or we can invite him carousing. Let's invite everybody carousing then. Why the hell not? Let's invite the entire goddamn court. Can we invite... He's our friend, right? So we can invite you carousing. No, apparently not. Um, is he busy? Oh, yeah. He needs to be at peace. Okay, fair enough. Then you know what? We'll just have a little a little summer hall gathering with blackjack and hookers. Don't tell my wife. Uh, court. Right. So let's start from the top here. Derwald. Welcome aboard, Derwald. Let's just get everybody in. Now, what's interesting is our wife is spawned in High Valyrian. Or our courtiers. Our... Oh, no way. That's our wife as well. Oh, shit. Our courtiers are... Oh, some are. Okay, we've got a weird mix here. So the ones that are our concubines, I wonder if that's when we present debutante or something. Whether or not those guys come in High Valyrian instead. It doesn't matter because we can't, like, train our child in the ways of High Valyrian. You can't convert uh, culture to High Valyrian as far as I know. F feel free to correct me on that. But last time, you know, we played this, people were saying that we couldn't do that. So it's not as if we can flip from a saucy Valyrian to High Valyrian. I believe, though, that is one of the religious doctrines that we can go for, is to is to add something like that to the ability of House Valane to, or House Valani, so that we become, you know, an official Dragon Lord, so to speak, who, who has that High Valyrian bloodline, and we have the blood of the Dragon Lords and all of that garbage going on as well here. Should I be worried that there's a... Oh, man, everybody wants to come to our... Hey, there we go. What a carousing. Holy shit. Do, should we be worried that um, 
you know, Dawn are right there. I, I mean, literally on our border, they're probably going to be one of the first targets if they sw swing through. To be honest, they're probably going to lose. How many men have they got? How many men has Doran Martel got? 17,000 men. Boris has 25,000 men, and the only people who haven't backed him in this war are Brightwater Keep, House Florent there, because uh, they're Brelaw. Oh my god, I bet there's a lot of Faith of the Seven. Wait, I thought the whole round would can. Oh man, okay. Okay, right, that looks a little more believable, huh? So we got Faith of the Seven, we got Faith of the Seven. Why did it say last time it was all one big blob? Well, that looks a bit more believable, though. Boris has taken a big chunk out of Westeros. I guess maybe they're converting back? What has he done that's lowered his moral authority this much? Bob, you better not ruin 200 years of hard work, my friend, otherwise I'll be livid. I also think as soon as possible, we probably want to jump back over to the Citadel. Playing Tor for a while is definitely something we've got to focus on. And the Citadel, from what we, from the little bit that we did in the last series, was incredibly powerful. Right? It was were insanely good. Oh god, we're now known as the Mutilator. Episode 1. We've cut off a man's balls. We're now known as the Mutilator of Summer Hall. Incredible. Great. Fantastic start. It's great to spend time carousing a merry company. While the cut's being refilled, Paraco brings a strange ball with little decorated pieces. Play for honor. Hail to the Lord. We become an apprentice board gamer. One of the better traits you can get is obviously Game Master. I quite like that one and uh, helps mitigate certain quite difficult events. But we'll not spoil that just in case we do get it. Sweet. We can actually get Game Master. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, narrow Plank plus 30% there. Marsh plus 1. Diplomacy plus 2. Centric. But, oh, yeah, let's take it. Why not? It, it's rare that... I mean, I'm trying to think, are there better ways of life than... Uh, or better hobbies? Or what is it called? Lifestyle. That's it. Lifestyle traits better than Game Master. Strategist, probably. Uh, Master Seducer is also pretty good, but besides that, I do like Game Master, maybe Architect at a push. This one is this one is quite a nice one to get. So as soon as possible, I'd really love to join the Citadel. Now for that, we need obviously Scholar, Astronomer, Cartographer. We can get that from the uh, Scholarship Focus just for a little while. When can we flip over? That might be something for tomorrow, yeah. 3404. It's actually not too long away. Like another year and three months, we can flip over to... A uh, year and four months. We can flip... A year and five months. We can flip over to uh, Scholarship and basically guarantee our way into the Citadel. We're still very, very young. So if we start that early enough, we're going to be a super, super powerful maester with 100,000 links by the time we finish up. So here's an interesting little button that I have no idea what that means. Sneak out. Seek... Sneak out and have some fun. Um... Okay, well, first things first, we'll send for a maester from the Citadel and actually uh, actually start that off first. Uh, Citadel's right, thank you very much. We don't have an air or anything yet. Maybe we should focus on that before we start sneaking off, just in case we die. Set house words. Oh, absolutely, okay. Um, house words, UI missing text. What the hell do I type here? Um, oh, right, okay, so, so here's, here are our house words. We don't worry about the bottom box, I assume. So what are the words of house words? Falani. Oh, you know what? This would be a good one to ask you guys who are watching right here and right, right now. What do you guys want to see? What do you think would be good? Well, I obviously had Fire and Fury during that intro, but that's a little cheesy and it's kind of a bit straightforward. Uh, let's go for something different and unique. So I'm, I'm going to take the best suggestion. Those would be the official house words of House Falani. Obviously, uh, House Durandon had their own. They had ours as the Fury, which obviously became House Baratheon as well. We're going to... Let's think something unique. I want to think of something... I don't just want to be like, oh, fiery storms or anything like that. It's got to be something relevant to the family, because they've had so many adventures so far. We'll cancel that for now, and we'll come back to that later on. How are they doing, then, in the war against... Uh, wait, did they win? What happened with that? Um, war against Martell. Uh, it's won by Good King Boris, so Dawn is actually back under the Storm Throne. When his other war ends here, they'll they'll all uh, sort of reconglomerate. Oh, God, he's also a Dragon Rider. So he already tamed... Ah, oh, my rival Dale died of poor health. What a, what a shame. What a real what a real sad shame that is. Uh, he's teaching the dragon in heritage, which is obviously fantastic. Macharion of King's Landing. Locked in the dragon pit. I don't know whether or not the AI has, uh, you know, sort of the sensibilities to know maybe I should release it from that so it grows bigger. I suppose it might have been the only thing that also let him hatch it. He still has those books, right? Those ridiculous books we spent years and years trying to get. Yeah, Blood and Fire of Fire is the freehold. Thank God for that. Ha ha, he who laughs laughed last the longest. Laughs, laugh, laugh. Well, finally, that driveling coward Dale has left this fine earth. Well, everything would definitely be better without him. Do we become kind or do we dig up his head, separate the skin from flesh and the bone, and then put it on our mantelpiece? Well, obviously, Lord Cameron the Mutilator, he's not a kind man. We shall mutilate more. We shall mutilate yet another day. Finally, with one last swing, the cleaver, Dale's ugly head is severed from his equally disgusting body. I roll it up in a piece of cloth, stash it in my satchel, and escape undetected into the night. I wish you were alive to see this, Dale. Take it home and polish it up quite nicely. And there we are. Our first artifact of the campaign. The head of a man that cooked us in episode one. Incredible. Original owner, Dale. Thank you all for watching. I hope you guys like the continued adventures that were sent up here. Yet another mega campaign. I know people like the mega campaigns. People have been asking for the colonization of Valyria for quite some time. 
So hopefully that is going to be something you guys are into as well. Plus it's kind of nice to see Boris back as well. I don't think Boris really got a fair shake there. Did the time lapse and then what? He just died of old age. That was a bit garbage. So let's see if he can actually achieve anything with, with what's left of his life. I mean, he's already grabbed Dawn, which is insane. So good luck, Boris. And you know who else deserves some good luck? It's the insane top tier level patrons. Made it sure as possible in the first place. So like I said, if you guys want your houses in the game and don't have them already in the game, all the ones from last series are still in it. I still need to land House Pearl and House Tolamu as well. Those are the two that, I, I think it was those two that lost their houses before the end of last episode. I would get those guys in. For the rest of you, your houses are still there, so don't worry about it too much. Let's give a shout out to Alpha Scuff, Asuna Kirito, Atmosis, Average Gamer 419, Banyol, Blurry Bunny, Sidini, Conspired C, Crazy Pack, Croesus, Danny Good, Donald, Eric B, Escape, Fukuno Vasquez, Fungus King, Gogolus, Harik, Haydog, Jimbo, Josh Lindin, Tesla, Justin Wallace, Caden Carter, Michael Mullen, Muskratful, Nathan Flores, Necrofilm, Pelvis Presley, Surthal the Swede, Saragon, Toby Cruz, Tom Terry 18, Tyler Kendall, Vacuus Packers, and Zazzy 7011. If you are a patron who's subscribed or whatever it is, patronized over the past couple of days on Patreon, I haven't had an updated list yet, but I will get that hopefully before tomorrow. And then at the start of the new month, obviously, we get a new one anyway, so it'll only be a tough couple of days maximum. Big shout out to you guys as well, though. I know there have been a couple of extra people. And a thank you as well to Asro, Ad in Person, Akari, Andrew Wilson, Arachnid44, Betamus Max, Sidini, Chris, David Van Diepen, Don, Don Connie 2 and 7, Fraser Brennan, Gabriel Faulkner, Gabriel Van Ders, Gaz, GDWK Run, Genji Zerka, Gray, Haji Damar, Hancock, Harry McGowan, Icy the Grey, Israel, Jay Lara, James Barnes, Yoran DeVries, Jessica Smith, John Holiday, Johnny No, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beard, Justin Plock, Justin Walters, Lemon Stark, Luan and Thomas, Matthew, Nathan Flores, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Nick, Noah Gallimore, Nixie, Pan Samu, Panther Pearl, Smirt One, The Insane Pickle, Vernon Meow, Will Wade, Wolfie, and Zico 2. Thank you all for your support.